Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode seven of the Expanded View. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm your host, co-host, Laura Canfield, along with Kimberly Crow. Awesome. How's everybody doing today? What's going on <laughs> in everyone's life? How is everybody's week? And oh my goodness, I know that uh, there's a full moon coming up tomorrow or the next day, right? Oh yeah, I guess there is there. It's a Pisces full moon. Is that right? I think it's, it is. I think it is. It's yeah, because that's right. Because I just booked a a retreat for October the tenth, which is a full moon. So this would we would be in a full moon now, I guess. Right? Mm -hmm. Is it a full moon or a new moon? I'm not full, sure. Full, full moon. Full moon coming up. I'm the one that's supposed to know astrology, and I don't know that today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny but no it's definitely the um full moon on tuesday or tuesday wednesday depending on your time zone coming up um so that's for sure and that's new um let's see what else i'm going to flying to paris early in the morning tomorrow so like you know not going not to do much today. I can't seem to find that. I was going to share this to a group. I thought we had a group. I uh, know it's not showing it for, I was trying to do the same thing. And I was like, why is this not showing up? Cause mm -hmm. I was trying to put it in the group and then into my yeah. uh, master self portal group. And it's like, okay, it's not showing up anywhere. So oh, well. I don't know if it's weird. We'll have to add it. today. We'll have to add it later. Sometimes, you know, there are little things that happen like, you know, mistakes or maybe, you know, maybe you already shared it. Who knows? Whatever. It's, it's okay. It's all right. So, um, so what else? Let's see. Um, I'm doing a DNA activation in an hour. So that's, that's happening. Yay. Um, that's great. <laughs> always so much fun. So there's still people joining and so on, but, um, that's, that'll be good. And then, uh, like I said, we're, we're packed, ready to go. I just have to put in my toiletries in my bag and then get a few hours sleep and then the taxi comes at 4 30 in the morning so then it's like then we're off so i'll be out of you know out for a couple of days um and then we'll be back to a regular routine on thursday you know back on thursday so really short just taking my daughter to paris because she's starting her graduate studies there oh that's exciting for right? her she's yeah so life life is going creation of life yeah exactly a new uh new phase in her life right Exactly. And so, that you know, oh, and oh my goodness, today is my nephew's, I guess my nephew, um, birthday. So happy birthday, Charlie. Happy birthday, Charlie. So it's his birthday today. Um, other than that, there's not much else going on. It's quiet in the house because we sent Neo to my, my stepson's house for two days while I'm gone. So it's so quiet without him here. It, I bet it is quiet without him there. <laughs> It always feels so weird when he's not here, you know, it's like, hmm, feels so empty and like nothing's happening, you know, so um, that's what's going on. But anyways, other than that, you know, it's so interesting how when we come together for these calls, it's like, okay, what are we going to talk about? And we, are, we always start off with, I don't know, we'll see what comes up. <laughs> but, but, you know, really, honestly, what's happening now, you know, that's coming through is about new beginnings right like we're talking about amanda she started it's a new phase of life it's also like september tomorrow so that's a new phase as well you know kids going back to school etc but the fall is you know for me it always feels like a new phase when we're entering the fall season right it feels the energy is different right the end of summer the beginning of fall right and it's kind of like you know a lot of people talk about hibernating and all that stuff but for me i always get it more creative energy at this time the time you go deep in and then the creation comes out when you go into that well you know you think about that in a way because the soon the trees will start be pulling their energy in mm -hmm. and really when they're going in like that it's it is to prepare themselves for the next creation and the energy that will be coming in um yeah so, absolutely yeah. You're in the line with that, with that time period. I know I've got a lot of creation going on. Uh, I did that 
you know, I was doing the eight day thing that, that we did on your thing, the magic. And then why during that, because when you step into the container, you know, then the next thing comes in. Mm -hmm. So the next piece that was coming in with it was a 30 day immersion with me on embodying your alchemy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm on a, I'm on a call with all of them. And I just real flip said, well, you know, maybe we'll just send the whole thing with the retreat. And that is my birthday weekend. It's like it's, it, and I was like, I'll just celebrate my birthday with you all. Oh, and, that'll be fun. Yeah. And then the next day, and it's like, <laughs> this is when we bust through the limitations of what seems to be in the 3D world. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next day, I, or I think it might've been that same day, I hit Facebook as much as we love, hate Facebook. Mm -hmm. And there's a, um, a person that I know, a friend that she's celebrating her two year old's birthday party at this retreat center here in the same county. It's 10 miles from my house. And I was like, what are they doing? They're written this to family. This retreat center, it's probably at least 200 acres. It's on the river, these humongous lodges. Okay. Years and years ago, it used to be a Boy Scouts camp. And then it's went through all of these different hands and different stuff. And um, I had a client a massage when I was doing massage, she was a massage client and they had, they were living on the property, a cu two couples bought it. They were going to turn it into like a, they did those jumpy things, whatever those are called. Mm -hmm. So they were going to turn it into like a family event thing out there. And then you could do stuff and it didn't work for them. Their own lives were in chaos. She contacted me to do land clearing on it. And quite honestly, it was their, it was their energy. They were all in chaos. They were creating poltergeisting energy and, you know, that with, with their own lifestyles and where they were at in life. Okay. So that's my first connection to this land. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then a few years yeah. later, I have this spiritual group of friends that we decided we were going to buy land to do a community retreat center where people can come, you know, blah, blah, blah. We went to different places. We went to Sedona. We looked at places out there. Mm -hmm. We did these like travel trips together to go look at these, you know, somebody would find a place and then we would go to look at it. So it was fun while we were doing it. And they came here and we went and did, we went to the land to walk it and the land starts talking to me and it's guiding me. And we're like, activating these you know vortexes and portals and and at the end of all of the day i'm sitting down at the river and it and this was my experience i had it was just like you know as live as we are together this like shaman came up out of the river and he had he was carrying a pink blanket and he and his partner they were together there was two of them and you know male and female and they put this, they wrapped me in this pink blanket and told me, they thanked me and honored me for the work that, you know, had been done. Wow. And returning nice. the land back, back to what it was there to be mm -hmm. and showed me how it had been happy grounds and sacred camping grounds and that, you know, all, through time and I was like seeing like when Native American Indians went there to it was a place of happy camping and you mm -hmm. know prosperity all of this stuff and that it was time for the children to return and I could hear children laughing you know echoing and laughing so the next week <laughs> another massage client tells me that the Catholic DSC his brother-in-law is on this committee and that they are going to buy it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh no, they have more money than God. We can't outbid them. <laughs> so I call my friends and I was like, all this manifestation we're doing to try to get lottery tickets to buy this place, it's not happening. And I kept hearing, it's okay, the lamb will, the, the lamb will be there for you. When you can return, the lamb will be there for you. And honestly, we weren't all on this same cohesive pattern with what we wanted, our ideas. Mm -hmm. And we're, we hadn't came together with the same vision, you know, of what yeah. we, we were going to do with all of this. I don't even know where any of those people are now. Some of them died. <laughs> They're in other planes of existence, that kind of thing. 
So this happens after I pop out, oh, let's just have a retreat, you know, in the middle of the situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yes. I can. This pandemic <laughs> well, situation, right. yeah. While I'm in this it's really expanded place, I say this. And then I then right after that, I see that this people there, these people are having a re, having a birthday party there. So I called them Monday. I called them. Oh, did I talk about this last Monday a little bit? I did, yeah. didn't I? See, I didn't remember talking about it. I didn't even remember that. Anyway, I went out there Wednesday. I went out there on Wednesday. He's going to rent it to me as a family. And it's yes. like, he was like, there's no reason. And I said, yes, this is my so family. I'm going to do this. And so I just got the paperwork for them. I went out there. I set a date. And uh, someone else that I done, had brought me in to teach classes, you know, when we were teaching in person, I got, you know, I saw her, her head, her face when I was leaving, mm -hmm. I called her, she's got a group that wants to come and then plus my group. And today I fixed all the pages to it and everything. And it's amazing. It's like, it came together just like that. And That's then, amazing. Um, yeah. I know it's like, it all just went into place and it's, <laughs> <laughs> and they called me this morning and they just sent me all the contracts and everything. And, um, and I even changed the weekend and they um, said that there was a, a church that was doing a retreat that same weekend. Hmm. And then she, uh, and I was like, okay, well, I might need to change the day. And I was just like, whatever's meant to be, it will be. And then they, they can't do it because of their numbers, you know, like what mm -hmm. the re regulations are on that. But because they're renting it to me as a family and not an organization, um, I can do it. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. So when we don't buy into all of that and we're not, I'm not saying that these, this is not real because all these things are real because it's in the mind of humanity and there's bandwidths of consciousness out there and whatever you tap into, then that's going to start being your world. Mm -hmm. And when you can go into this place of neutral, be in your sacred heart and listen to spirit, spirit will take care of all of it. It's like it just starts falling in place and it just, you know, it's the, so it's this new creation, this new coming in with all of this. And that's the thing, if and when it's meant to be, it will just fall into place, right? Exactly. As long as you're, take, you're keeping your head out of it, right? And you are just, you know, allowing yourself to be in the flow, right? In the flow of, you know, what is meant to be, then it will happen with ease, right? But it's just when we get in our heads <clears throat> and we want to control this and control that and figure this out and figure that out. That's when the energy gets a little uh, constricted, right? And it doesn't flow as smoothly as we would like. And that's when we say, oh, there's obstacles in the way, there's this and there's that. There's really not, but it's about being willing to allow everything to happen our own and control. Unfold. Yeah, it's our own control has got in there and it's trying to manage and manipulate everything. Yeah. Because I don't, you know, I mean, part of me really doesn't even know what we're going to do that weekend. It's just like little drops come in. It's like, oh yeah, we're doing shamanic breath work. Oh yeah, we're doing art. I'm, you know, it's like I'm going through the art supplies and it's like, oh yeah, we're going to do these things. Oh, oh, my granddaughter has a bubble machine. I may need to borrow that from her. <laughs> it's like, we exactly. may need a bubble machine. Oh, wouldn't that be cool? Like at your, you know, like kind of how like there would be graduation, but like at the end of everything, we could all walk through the bubbles. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And how much fun is that? And, you know, and so you're bringing the energy of lightness and play because, you know, when you're working with spirit, it's not about being serious and in a, in a fixed way, right? It's not, it's about being light and flowing and being open to those little inspirational hits that you get right being open to them and being willing to receive them and then saying okay you know that might be fun instead of saying well that's stupid you know like just don't shut the door right right so keep, keep the door open to any of those little insights that you get those little messages and hits that you get because that might be what somebody in that group for the retreat requires mm-hmm Right. So this is not about you trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do? This is about you being open to, okay, how can I serve and what does the group require? And then this information is coming to you. Yeah, exactly. And, and then just hold the sacred space and be willing, willing to 
hold the space, willing to listen to spirit and to say yes, you know, say yes as the energy comes in. And you can always say yes again. Yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. It's this, like, is not, <laughs> this is not yes, but yes, and yes, I'm not sure. This is yes. And then see, see what else. Yeah, is. yes. See what happens. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's exactly. the adventure? Yes. Okay. I'm willing to to watch this, to witness this, to be the sacred witness. And yeah. not just be the witness, but to participate in it, to engage in it. Right. Yeah. Right? So, you know, and this is about engaging and co-creating with spirit for the, for the highest good of every, everyone. Yeah. The highest good of everyone. Cause that's what I, you know, during this time period that we're in and so much, uh, you know, so, so much of the chaotic mind is creating like crazy, um, you know, spirit, I mean, spirit showed me this stuff. It's like, I saw all of the different parallels and all the holograms that were out there and, um, you know, asked, well, what is my assignment with this? And my assignment is to stay in neutral and to anchor the lot. You know, some, it's like, that's what it is. Just, it's like, be in that, willing to anchor in the um, unproceeded energy that is begging to be birthed here. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, it is calling out for the responders of the yes. So here's a question for all of you watching and or listening now or later. Are you willing to say yes? Are you willing to respond yes? Right? Without one, having to know all the bits and pieces, without having to know all the next steps, without any of that, but are you willing to say yes? If you are, raise your hand. So as soon as you <laughs> raise your hand, what happens? Spirit says, oh, she's raising her hand. She's saying yes. Okay, let me send some information to her and let's see how she wants to play with it, right? But if you don't raise your hand, right, then it's like, okay, spirit's just going to go to somebody else who has their hand raised. It, it will. The energy will, that when it comes in, that energy of creation, because you know how we see it, it go, it, it's like a bandwidth in that it goes out to many people and then it comes out in different ways, you know, how it comes through their filters and it, and it, it will move into... Uh, when it's time to be created, it'll keep being created. Yeah. You know, I'm in my relationship with it now. It's like, I literally hear when you take this assignment and then I don't even have to know what the assignment is. You know, I can say yes or no. And if I say yes, then it's like, then they, it's like, it starts being created. It's like, okay. As yeah. long as it, I'm at the well, pace as long, as long as it's with grace and ease, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> exactly. Grace and ease. Absolutely. And, that, and, that, and that's the thing. Like some people who are watching or listening, that might be saying, but I'm not getting the message. I'm not hearing spirit. My hand's raised. I, I want to be of service. I want to play with spirit. I want to co-create, but I'm not getting the message. I'm not getting the hits or there's so many obstacles in the way. I can't, I can't create what I desire. And that's the thing. What do you desire or what? creator wants to, you know, bring through you, right? So a lot of times, you know, when we, when we're focused on our desire, I want to do this, I want to create this, but I'm going to be in service to spirit, but I want to create this. So where is spirit in there really? You know, and this is, this is really important for everybody. It's about getting your ego out of the way, getting your head out of the way. And are you really, you know, this, some people might not like this conversation now, but are you really being in service to spirit or are you being in service to your mind and your ego and your desires? And there's no judgment here. Absolutely. If you want to, no, it's, you know, yeah. work on your desires, if you're like, I want this, awesome. Then please don't say that you're doing this for spirit. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just thinking of somebody in particular right now in this moment who's, who's like, who is coming to me and she wants to create something and hasn't been able to, right? So she is, of course, you know, judging herself probably, but the thing is, is she really doing it for herself or is she doing for spirit or she's saying she wants to do it for spirit because she's, you know, she wants to be of service. But the thing is, how much of that is your own mind, your own ego? And how much are you truly allowing spirit to work through you? It's a fine line. When I'm, 
when I'm working with something and if it's, you know, if that, if it starts feeling out of kelter, out of whatever, I literally sat down with my journal and uh, cause the way it's been shown to me is I see it as a triangle and spirits on top. And this is like, you know, soul and human aspect. And so when they come together, it's this balance of it and it's this foundation. And then like the energy's coming down from spirit mm -hmm. and then you're, you're like, it's goes into motion. And so soul is using the human aspect as its vehicle of evolution for the next realm, for the next realm is the next realm. And so sometimes when something's going on or if I'm having a conflict, even if it's with an individual person, you know, uh, and I will go in and, and draw the triangle, <laughs> it's, who's in charge? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, and I draw like, the, even though I'm an artist, they're little stick people, you know, and it's like, who's at the top of the triangle? Yeah. Who's there? And I'll hear, oh, human, human, human is running the triangle today. And and you know, so soul may be pushed way out somewhere. Like when I sat with it, it may be nowhere close to the top. Yeah, absolutely. And in spirit, somewhere in the background. Yeah, and that's and, what I'm saying. There's no judgment and that's here. How I it's work just with being, it. It's about I mean, being I aware work with of it, it like that. Yeah, yeah, I sit there and I work with it. It's like doing some kind of find a word or something. I work with the triangle, drawing it out, and then I'll, you know actually talk to human aspect. Okay. What's going on? You know, what's the, what's this about, you know, and I said in dialogue back and forth with it, how old are you? Who's running the show? You know, what's this about? Sometimes it's so on the top that is trying to push through some last bit of karma or something. I don't have that much anymore, but I used to a lot, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. like it wanted this and it wanted it. Cause it can have an agenda too. Of course. Yeah. And it, and, and it's like, but it's like, as soon as, if I can bring them into balance and I get spirit back on top of that triangle, <laughs> when it works out, because spirit will set back, it will take the back seat. Yeah. And so when it's, you know, gets back up on top, then I can't, then the directions start coming in. If that's the word to use, you know what and, I mean? And it's that's, like a, yeah, yeah. And that's then what I can be led. The directions come in and then it yeah. starts to be. Of, of grace and ease because that's what I choose. I've done enough of the parts of life of kicking the door in. Yeah, and struggle, and struggle and all that wonderful stuff. Yeah, and that's the thing, but it's about asking those questions. When things are not flowing the way that you would like or with ease, we'll say with ease and grace, if they're not flowing with ease and grace, that's when you have to get really clear. It's like, okay, who's running the show here? Is it me or is it spirit? Who is it, right? Because right. if, it's, if it's not spirit, then no wonder everything is not flowing because I don't know everything, you know, me, my mind, my ego does not know everything. Right? right. But I'm trying to control. Right. And I am a control freak. There's no question. Right. So all those times when I let spirit be the driver and Oh my God, I, I love that analogy. Right. Cause I love to drive and I, you know, I don't like being a passenger very often. <laughs> so again, that's a control freak thing. But when I, when I find myself in the driver's seat and I notice, oh my God, things are not working the way they should or the way I want them to, or there's like all these obstacles, it's like, take a step back and say, okay, spirit, okay, creator, okay, God, what is the next step? You know? You'll feel I'm gonna, the I'm gonna step back. You'll actually feel like you're going against the flow, you know, yeah. like you're walking against the wind or it's like there's that it's not, um, yeah, there's a, you'll feel the difference in between the energy. So there's ways like that to feel the difference in between the energy, you know, and, and we can say sometimes, yeah, but it's this person and you know, this is the obstacle that's in the way. And, and it's like, but there's a part, but I don't like using that word. However, there's a part of us <laughs> that is called that obstacle in, yeah. you know, it's like they, it, it, there's always that type of energy that's going on. There's something going on with that. And how did we vibrate that in? And how did we magnetize that to us? But the thing is, know, all of those so-called obstacles, et, et cetera, that, that are in the way, including people or whoever, to have, or whoever, whatever, all those things are there in service to us. In ser they're serving us so that we can actually see and be more aware of what is going on who is functioning here, where am I in this mix, and where is spirit in this mix? And, you know, so it's, it's serving us in some way. And 
when you get that, then you realize that, you know, everything that's happening, everything that's happening is happening for my highest good. But so if I just, you know, stop resisting and stop reacting and instead be aware and allow myself just like, okay, this is happening. I don't like it. So let's see what else is, what else is possible here. So breathing through it, allowing it, being willing to actually see the wisdom behind what's going on. Right. Yeah. Sometimes the wisdom there. Into, there, sometimes it's, as simple as stepping into gratitude you know that part that you don't like it how do i how do i use gratitude with this and what is this reflection off and that energy can move all kinds of things when you really see it get the aha with it you know when you really get the aha with the energy what the what is it there for and how have you you know so that energy can move you through that into the grace so, so for all of you who are watching or, and or listening now or later, just really look at your life, what's going on right now. Are there any uh, obstacles? Are there any challenges? Are there any areas in your life that are not working the way that you would like or are not working with ease? Just take a look at them and see how they are a gift and blessing for you so that you can actually you know, become aware of what's going on and how your mind is working or how your emotions are working or where, you know, where you're allowing your mind and ego to take the driver's seat instead of letting spirit work through you and, and take, take, the, take the lead sometimes, right? Right, and when is it projections that we've allowed to come in from external things? You know, it's that, that can really get the mind stirred up and get the mind creating scenarios. And then you realize, I'm not even in the driver's seat. <laughs> it's like anymore. All of this energy has came into my mind. And then you're, you know, ran, you're running around in the monkey mind. And, and that's, you know, when you come back to center and it's like, is this going on in my heart? Is this going on in my spirit? Absolutely. Energy, and right. those projections and those expectations and those comparisons and, you know, looking at everybody else instead of going within and looking at you, right? Looking, going within and looking at you and asking questions about, okay, what is it that I truly want? Or, you know, what is my soul trying to show me? What is spirit trying to show me here? You know, and let, let's be honest. Sometimes we don't want to ask those questions. Sometimes we don't want to ask the questions because I don't want to look at it. <laughs> I don't want to see it. It's like, I just want it to get fixed. Right. Right. Have you ever had that, that feeling of, I just want it to be fixed. I just want everything to be gone and, you know, be like a four-year-old and five-year-old. It's like, I just want this now. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've all experienced that we've all had that but you know we're not five years old right uh, we, we all have all of our magic when we're five years old <laughs> there's parts of us that haven't shut down yet <laughs> it's just wants to use it in the world and sometimes that part is um waiting the waiting the waiting to use the magic so I wanted to give um, everybody a tool of some sort, Kimberly, or some sort of like a, and you're, and you're really good at, with this kind of stuff, you know, like on the spot, you know, kind of like a, a quick little activation or a quick little um, process that they can do when they have the monkey mind going. Because, you know, like, if you ask me, I'll say, well, you know what, take a deep breath, be in your heart space, expand out, <laughs> focus on the bottom of your feet, right? That'll get you out of your head. It, it does. It pulls you out of it. It disconnects you because that whole process I do that I call distant connecting from the mind matrix, that's really what you're doing. You're pulling away from it and disconnecting because we are the ones that have sent air discernment, air psychic energies out in all of that, thinking there's answers outside of us. And when we, you know, nobody hooks you unless you, or you're opening up to be hooked by the energy. And so it's being clean with yourself and what have I hooked into? Mm -hmm. And then when you bring that back, then you come into center, which is, you know, using the breath, coming down and bringing your, you know, disengaging your mind from yeah. it. Yeah. That you're literally breathing, taking that moment 
to pull away from it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, so disengaging, pulling back your energy, being in your own energy, being in your body. Because let's say, let's face it, we're here, you know, to embody this physical reality, right? So you can't just stay in your head all the time, or you can't just stay out there all the time. You have to be in your body. Right. And mm-hmm. so a lot of times, you know, when my mind is going and sometimes it does, it just goes, 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 doesn't stop. Then it's like, I need to do some breathing. I need to do some mantras. I need to or go for walking a walk. Even. Yeah. I, can, I can say the word today because Neo's not here, but I can go for a walk and, you know, and that does wonders. Right. But you have to, you know, first of all, recognize, oh, crap, my mind is just going like crazy. I'm, I, I can't, I'm getting caught up in loops. A lot of times we're not even aware of, what our mind is doing because we're so habituated to think, 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 right? So I always tell my clients that, you know, every hour, take a deep breath, every hour, just on the hour or every time you go through a doorway or every time you touch your phone, just take a deep breath, come back to your heart space, come back to the bottom of your feet. Because a lot of people, they can't feel their heart space, right? So it's like, okay, fine, but you know how you get the bottom of your feet feel, so focus on the bottom of your feet. Just one breath, two breaths, whatever. And that's gonna, you know, create a short little pattern interrupt in your brain, or in your mind, in that monkey mind, that chatter, right? It's gonna, it's gonna create a little interrupt. And the more that you do that, then you'll start to become aware of, okay, right now, oh my goodness, my mind has been going crazy for like, I don't even know how long, how did I even get to this thought, right? And so you'll be able to catch it. And then, you, and then you know, with, with practice, you'll be able to go back and see, oh, that's where my mind went from here to here to here to here to here and brought me here. Oh, got it. I see. Wow, my mind's been active. Wow, my mind's right. been busy. When you hear yourself in those scenarios and you're answering it back, and then when, that, then this, when this happens, then this, <laughs> and you start all of that, and it's like that, when you disconnect from that, then it's like, then you're in that place of the silence. And then the silence is when you can actually hear, you can listen, you know? And, and when I say listen, it doesn't mean that it's this audible voice that goes, go here now. It's yeah. not, it, <laughs> it can be, but it, it's, it's more just the knowing is there and then it just begins. It's like it, you know, it, it's just there for you. Yeah, exactly. Or you can even ask a question, you know, say you can talk to your higher self, say, okay, higher self, what, can, what, what's the next step with this, whatever this is, right? What's the next step? Ask a couple of times and then let it go. You'll get the answer, right? You will get the answer, but it won't be a booming voice. It might be, you might see a book on your bookshelf and the title of that book is the answer, or you'll go to that exactly. bookshelf and, 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 a, and a book is going to jump out at you and you open it up and you open the page and there's the answer right there, right? There's some, something like that. Or you might hear something on the radio. Could be a song, could be just somebody talking, or if you're in a cafe, somebody next to you is talking, saying something, and there's one little word or phrase that they say, that's the answer. But are you willing to receive that? Are you willing to, for it to be that easy? Mm-hmm. Right, because spirit is gonna work through everything and everybody around you for you to get the message. Right. Yeah, because we're all connected in some way. It's like it's in the energy will come to you. I mean, sometimes I might pick up a. There's a. I have a whole bunch of oracle decks over here, Mm -hmm. and I may be like, "There's a card that wants to talk to me," and I'll just kind of scan it and go, "Oh, it's this deck," and then pull it in right there. You know, there's a message, and even especially even when I'm in the mind, and then it's like, "Oh, okay, this is what's going on. It's this part of me." that's running the show right now what's the message within it and then yeah going inside and feeling what that is yeah absolutely. and so you I- know when you said that sometimes you can't people maybe not be able to feel their heart energy and we do we have because we started creating um walls to protect the vulnerable heart because the uh, you know emotional uh, experiences then what I have found it, if you breathe and kind of bring your attention and go into the back of the heart, mm-hmm. that there's like a expansion that happens because all these heart walls are still in the front. And so there's like ways to go in there and to just set with it. And then you can anchor in from that space. And sometimes it's simply moving, you know, getting yeah. up and like shaking your body out and shaking it all off. Take yeah. a shower. 
<laughs> exactly. That does How much stuff happens in that? Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that happens during that time period. It's like you get quiet in the water and, and their magic can happen. Absolutely. And so sometimes, you know, just that, that rinsing off of the water is actually rinsing your energy field, right? Getting rid of that mental and sometimes emotional debris, I'm going to call it, you know, that extra yeah, that you don't need, right? Yeah. So that is a real, really, that's really, really good. But also watching something funny, right? So earlier today, my daughter was having a, a moment. And so, you know, her energy was off and she was in a bad mood and whatever. And, you know, I sprayed her with some stuff, which was great. Um, oh, and then she, true. and then she decided, you know, she said, you know, what else can I do? I said, well, why don't you watch something funny? That is the conversation we had. She's like, <laughs> right. <laughs> so then she watched something funny and oh my goodness, you should, you should have heard her laughing. You know, it was amazing. It was awesome. Right. And that can automatically shift your energy too and get you out of your head, get you out of your emotions and just free up that energy so it's moving again, right? And then when it's moving again, then the, the, um, the energy all around you starts to work through you in different ways so that whatever the issue was starts to suddenly become resolved, right? Because, but it's because we've, we've decided to focus on something else for a little while and you know change our energy that thing then starts to move into place. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it really does work. It could be anything. It could be like cats, could be dogs, could be whatever, you know, any, any, any show, you know, like just pick something. It doesn't matter whatever, you know, makes you laugh. Yeah. Right? I was thinking about that with sound because even toning, you know, just let, even if it's not, doesn't sound pretty, just, oh, you know, coming yeah. out, whatever it is, just gonna let it come out. And then, you know, toning with that, and it doesn't have to just be, you know, arms and arms, you know, it can, it yeah. can just be noise and then it breaks all of it down. Or, you know, what you can do, you it's can like snap, your, out. snap your fingers all around your field or clap all around your field, you know, that'll change up the energy as well. Or take, you know, I always like um, tuning forks and things like that, you know, just to break up the energy all around you, right? There's so many ways that we can do that to shift our energy and get out of our heads. So many ways. So it's like, it's just amazing to me now how many ways there are for us to get out of our heads. And we're still, we're still in our heads, you know? And it's like, ah, oh, this mind has such a hold on us because we've been, that was, that's been our conditioning for so long. It has been air conditioning and that, you know, the whole ascension thing is that the consciousness will come from the heart. And that's what all of this chaos and everything is about because people are still fighting it and they're not ready to surrender and they're still out there in their, you know, righteous head energy. <laughs> but that, and that's the thing, the consciousness is going to come from the heart, but only if you're in the body. Right. Right. You have to bring yourself back into the body. That's why we're here. And, you know, being here on this, you know, physical realm, on this 3D reality, in this 3D real on this planet. And you, and you talked a little bit about gratitude earlier. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. You know, and sometimes I know when we're in the muck of things, we can't find something to be grateful for. I get it. But there's always, always, always something to be grateful for. Always. For all of us, you know. So right. sometimes you have to dig deep. Dig deep. Okay, dig deep. Um, but you'll find it and it, it, it does get better. It does get easier. But yes, I think, you know, yeah, yeah. even if the gratitude is, well, I'm thankful that I have the right to just feel as crappy as I want to today. And it's exactly. like, it's like that can start changing you. You know, yeah. it's like, it can, it can actually, if you actually, instead of being resistant to it, just like really go into it. I did that this weekend. I, I just realized that, that that's what I did with my granddaughter, not really realizing it. I watched her uh, Saturday morning and we were in the front porch swing mm -hmm. and it was making a noise and it kind of frightened her, you know, and she was like, what is that? What is that? Gaga? I don't, what, what's that noise? And I, and so when we would go up to it, I started doing the same sound as the swing. I was going, ah. mm -hmm. <laughs> she started laughing. And when three-year-olds, when they get their giggle box flipped over and then they actually start hiccuping, you know, they mm -hmm. get to the point to where they're laughing and they're hiccuping. And every time I would get to that point, I would do the same sound as the swing. And, and it, you know, and then immediately, instead of me going, oh, I don't know, that's making a noise. Maybe, you yeah. know, we should move. I just started doing the same sound as the 
swing did, and it did some kind of feel like there was a whole feel of a resonance that started, and you know, and then we were both like laughing hysterically, and and that um, the there's a guy that did a bunch of stuff with the tuning forks. So that's a long story, and we're at the end of our thing. <laughs> and he did a bunch of studies with that and the sounds and how that, you know, it, it will resonate within you and change your whole central nervous system. Absolutely. Your parasympathetic Absolutely. nervous yep. system. Yeah. yeah, you're right. That's for another, that's for another day. Another yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll get into tuning forks one day. We don't ever talk about them. We can yeah. have a whole conversation about those. <laughs> maybe next week, maybe week after, we'll see, right? But yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. So is there anything else you wanted to add today, Kimberly? That no, I've got, that, I've got the program coming up. It's the 30 days with me. It starts Saturday. I've got two spots left. I'm keeping it in a small container because I'm planning on going through every individual person's to codes and to see that they're all activated and connected because I'm realizing we can have these things connected. I mean, activated and it's about the connectors together you know, mm -hmm. it's just like having programs in your computer. And if there's not a, something in there to create the communication, you know to talk to yeah, each the other. communication. Yeah. so that's what that's about. And I do have two spots left. Awesome. So if anybody was interested in that, they can get a hold of me with what's going on with that. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. And then so... the retreat in October, if anybody wants to fly to Kentucky or <laughs> drive to Kentucky or however you can get I here. I told you to do it online as well. Oh, I'm thinking about seeing how I can do that because they they do have Wi-Fi and big screens and stuff like that out there. And so yeah. I thought I'll see how I can do that part too. Because then you, then more people can join you. Mm -hmm. So you might want to think about that. So, right. so everybody stay tuned for that. That, that, that info may be forthcoming. See, you're putting it in. She's already putting that in for me, making the connections happen. Now I can go check that information out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay. All right, everyone. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it's a busy week again, like always, you know, we have uh, the DNA activation coming up in 15 minutes. And then, of course, on the Laura Canfield show this week, later this week, we have Lori Spagna on the show and then Susan Kennard on the show this week. So um, look out for those emails and social media posts. That'll be on Thursday and Friday. All right. So thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> have a great week. Until next time, may you continue to be blessed with an abundance of joy, peace, love, happiness, prosperity, and radiant health. Sending you all much love and blessings always. Mm, bye, bye for now. Vivian. Thank you for being the gift that you are for humanity. May you be blessed. Thank Bye. you. Everyone. Bye for now.